The question that I get faced with a lot is why exactly are LLM models so bad at things like function calling? Um, you can take a model like GPT-40, for example, which is kind of like the most advanced that we have for function calling right now. And then if you pit it against like Llama, for example, Llama 3.1, you'll notice a steep drop off in the abilities of the model. Like there's different stuff built into GPT-40 that isn't present in the Llama model. Uh, and you'll notice that across the board, and even with GPT-40 on its own, it's not uh, the best at function calling, right? It's still uh, like below 50% accuracy um, in a lot of instances. And then so uh, breaking down the reason for that, the reason is very simplistic. And then if you watch like any, and if you look at any of my frameworks that I put out, and it's <clears throat> backed up heavily now by OpenAI very specifically, uh, I always incorporate swarm algorithms on top of the LLM model when it comes to function calling, right? Like my goal and when I build things out is to have the LLM model not perform the functions. Like it's okay for it to think about it and I want it to predict on the function, but I don't want it to execute. Uh, so uh, I don't want, I want it to do the prediction function, but I don't want it to perform the action in, in the discrete environment is really what it boils down to. And then, so what am I talking about within that, right? Let me kind of frame that for you and then try to break this down very simplistically. Uh, when it comes to machine learning, there's essentially two things and two uh, areas that the machine can learn on and uh, or take action on, right? Which is predictions and classifications uh, or linear versus discrete environments. And then so a, uh, let's first of all discuss what a discrete environment looks like. Uh, and then in uh, reinforcement learning, for example, a discrete environment can be very straightforward. And then so this is uh, training a reinforcement learning algorithm, so a Q learning algorithm on a maze, right? And then the colors of the maze represent uh, different functions. And then I'm going through the code to try to see uh, exactly what they uh, what the different colors are. But it's like um, uh, the blue is the starting position, the red is the agent, and then it's trying to get to the green. Um, and then the, the uh, blacks are obstacles. And then so it's just going through and it's learning what to do. It's taking action. Uh, and then in this instance, it can take different actions, right? It can go up, down, left, or right. Um, so that's considered discrete actions. And then it can do this in every single instance. It can go right. And then once it goes right, it can then go up, down, left, or right. If it goes down from there, it can go again, up, down, left, or right from there, right? Uh, and then so uh, that's what makes it discrete as opposed to predictive. Uh, and then it's resetting once it hits the, the green, right? And then so it's training to uh, learn how to hit that green and then it's doing that by just doing like a bunch of like random actions right it's uh and then what it does is it does random actions and then it, it has like a pokedex in its mind essentially uh and then when it, that random action actually does something it it, it might set it into the pokedex and then so it knows what to do uh from there and then so uh, i could let this train forever basically and then let that go but so that gives you like the very like what most people would think of when we're talking about discrete environments, which is an environment where like, again, it's um, you're not predictive, not smooth, right? So then what would be the, the opposite of a discrete environment would be an example like this, right? And then so uh, a graph and a grid, what we're looking at here, this is an environment. So then I, like, that's the second thing to note within this, right? When we're talking about environments, we're talking about, um, an environment for an algorithm. <laughs> and then so an environment can essentially be anything. It, like, uh, And then generally speaking, our environments are uh, two-dimensional, three-dimensional, or multi-dimensional graphs and grids. Uh, and then so in this instance, it's a two-dimensional graph. Uh, and then we're plotting essentially house pricing predictions. And then it's um, linear. So then we're just, we have one prediction and then the model learned based off of the prediction and based off of this scattered data, which is all around the prediction, but we only have one prediction, right? Whereas opposed to uh, if we have uh, nonlinear data and we want to utilize a uh, discrete learning algorithm, 
we would have something like this, right? And then what you can see is that the red lines are multiple predictions and the multiple predictions can deviate from the like the learned uh, model, right? Like because they, they explore and they're going out and they're doing uh, those different actions that that exploration function. Uh, and then this function, uh, just so you know, functionally, it, this operates off of entropy uh, and the second law of thermodynamics is essentially what measures and, and what powers this forward. Uh, whereas with prediction algorithms, they're very straightforward. They're, they're, they're generally they're more simplistic algorithms <laughs> in that sense. Just highlighting that um, overall as to, to um, how they work and the difference between how they work. But so within this, right? Um, this this process, this diffusion process, like this kind of more magical, like um, in a box process, is different, holistically different than this, right? While these two graphs, the output is is kind of similar, right? <laughs> like it's it's like I mean, if you look at them visually, there's not a huge difference between this and this visually, right? But behind the scenes, I mean, this is a whole different algorithm, right? This would be like comparing like. Um, apples to like uh something like 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 gravy right <laughs> like 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 it's not even in the same category uh on the back end they're both food at the end of the day but that would be their only actual correlation right like it's like there's not a lot of correlation between the two outside of the fact that they're both food items uh and that's really what we're looking at within this here right and then but so what does how does this matter and very simplistically when you want to get a lm model to make a function call to take action Actions, like to um, invoke an API, you're asking it to do a discrete learning function to do to operate in this realm in this category, whereas the LLM model is always trained on this in this in this category, right? Um, and then that's just how it is. Like the LLM model is flat out, and no matter what you do, even if you're using RLHF, like reinforcement learning with human feedback you're still utilizing these algorithms. You're not utilizing Q learning algorithms like what we're seeing up here. This is, like I said, Q learning algorithm up here for reinforcement learning, right? For RLHF, you don't use it. You use PPO, which is this, right? Like uh, more, uh, it, it, you're, you're predicting overall. It's kind of just the bottom line there. And then so it's a very clear distinction. You like LM models aren't trained on this. This is not a neural, this is not an LM model. This is not a neural network. Uh, I can shape this into a neural network and it would be a completely sh different shape and a completely different model than an LLM model, which would be, again, a prediction model. So I would have it do different things and different use cases. And so you can combine these models, right? That's what we see with multimodal models. Uh, and then so when you uh, invoke Dolly from ChatGPT, that's multimodality, right? And then so you can utilize those same principles within this. There's no reason to bend the LLM model to try to do and make predictions in this type of environment when it's meant to do this. Just get an algorithm that does this and then bolt it on on top and then say, hey, LM model, use this algorithm. <laughs> and then that's the simple logic behind swarm algorithms, right? Very simple. And then so like a lot of people ask, like a lot of times, like why do you use the swarm algorithms? How does the swarm algorithms come into play within everything that you're doing or what you're doing within these function calls, et cetera? Again, it's just a, a swarm algorithm is trained on this. <laughs> like this is its job, right? It knows how to do this, like the back of its hand. Uh, if you have it do this, it will do it all day. If you have it do this, it struggles more. Like, and you can have, again, like, and that's the beauty, like, uh, the beauty of it, right? Like, you can make swarm algorithms do this. And I've shown examples of that. Like, I'll, I'll shape an, uh, a swarm algorithm to do this. It's not its job. It's harder. It's not as good as just putting an algorithm that will do this, right? And it's the same thing in reverse. Like you can shape the LLM model to do this, it'll do it. Um, and then if with a lot of training, it'll do it better. Um, but again, like it's not like it's expensive and it's not its job. Its job is to do this. So just have it do its job. Uh, and then give this job to something else. And that's just the natural order of things. Like it's just better and it flows better, right? It's uh, 
putting multiple pieces together, kind of like the brain, right? Like, like uh, I saw an interesting post that someone made where they said that like researchers really, really want LLM models to be the whole brain as opposed to like parts of the brain. And I think that's very accurate. <laughs> and, like everyone wants the LLM model to be all of the functions of all of the brain. It's never going to be that. Uh, it will be some of the functions of some of the brain, and then things like swarm algorithms would then be a bolt-on on top of that. Uh, evolutionary algorithms, genetic algorithms, uh, all different types of algorithms, right? There's, I mean, uh, Bayesian, Monte Carlo, uh, whatever, uh, like, uh, you want to throw in there, right? Um, these are all, like, bolt-ons that would be on top of this, like, different subregions of the brain, exactly how the brain works. There's a reason why the brain has subregions, and it's not just because of evolution. Like, I've kind of gone through that, right? Um, and then, but so... Subregions are good in the brain, and they're good for LLM models too. And it's good to uh, have them be bolt on tools and then not just make the LLM model do everything. Uh, hopefully, this is illustrative of that fact. And if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.